as you can imagine, we have, you know, call it close to a thousand stores across the country and thousands and thousands of employees, um, both that work in our stores, that run all of our distribution centers, that go into um, customers' homes. And so to coordinate that large of a change in essentially 48 hours. And when I mention what the change is, I'll just be specific. We went from being a regular old retailer with our doors open and employees going into homes to having to essentially shut down our entire um, retail footprint, stop all of our employees from you know entering customers' homes uh, and move to what we called curbside, um, curbside delivery model. Uh, overnight. I mean, we really basically did that over the course of a weekend. And um, that just required us to work, you know, incredibly collaboratively. And I would have said before that Best Buy was highly collaborative. We're super matrix organization, but it forced even um, greater collaboration. And it just required that we pivot as quickly as possible with the customer needs in mind um, and design an experience as fast as we possibly could. Uh, I think we went through the three phases or we're going through the three phases of, you know, a crisis. So we did crisis response, which was not that shocking for the airport, you know, knock on wood, which is a good thing. So, you know, you set up your emergency operations center and response teams and communication protocols. And so that all happened. Uh, and then we went right into budgets and, and projects and reassessing all of that. So, and working with the airlines. So that was pretty, pretty tactical, pretty hardcore for about 30 to 45 days. Uh, and then now we're in that second phase, which is, you know, the fire is out, now it's crisis abatement and what do you do next? And so we're thinking about, we're working through scenario planning exercises, tracking trends, looking at the forecasts, working with uh, our partners and retailers to try to assess when our consumer is going to come back and then what's our, what's our three or four different plans, uh, depending on how the market goes and how the economy goes. So that's that's the phase we're in now. Um, everybody's working remote other than, you know, critical folks. So that was a, it was a quick switch, but it was a little bit of an adjustment to get an entire operational team. If you think how operational an airport is, getting everybody to work from home on laptops, uh, that's a little bit different. So that was a little bit of an adjustment. Uh, and then eventually we hope we'll start to get into recovery mode here uh, in the in the fall, which means how do you take some of our scenario plans and turn them into a strategic plan for the next 12 to 18 months? So the challenge is the longevity piece because there there are a, a, a ton of new challenges and new opportunities that have presented themselves. But like we were talking yesterday, uh, it's it, if you were the uh, um, uh, the market leader on it, it may be that the problem, you know, it goes away, they, they have a solution for the corona and, and we're very, um, you know, short-sighted and, and uh, short memory and and, uh, and you may have a solution for the next pandemic, but it, it could just go away. So the, the key to, to driving in, drilling into uh, identifying the right solution and the right problem to solve is looking at it from the lens of, okay, what are the new challenges that we have today? And then how could those be applied if this problem goes away? So in other words, could you take that same solution and pivot it slightly to uh, solve some additional problems? Also looking at it from a trend standpoint to, to anticipate where's the market going to go? Uh, so understanding that whole picture is really the, the key in, in pinpointing uh, which opportunity to select because there, there's a ton of them out there. We have a unique challenge that if you think about it, it takes three to four years to build a terminal. Um, and so if you're trying to think about technology and what technology you're gonna put in the terminal and you know it's not gonna, it's gonna take three to four years to do that renovation, whatever you're talking about right now is not gonna be worth it four years from now. So it's a real unique challenge and it's something that me and the the chief information officer and as well as our head of infrastructure and development, we battle with that all the time. So I think we try to go back to that jo quote unquote jobs to be done. You know, what do people need to do? And then try not to get hung up on the tech, but take that platform approach that most product developers do these days or most product companies do. But how do you do a platform approach at the airport so that we build an infrastructure that allows us to plug and play tech as tech changes 
but we also make smart decisions on how you support the infrastructure, right? So better being a smart airport or, you know, facilitating a certain e- e-commerce or retail or food beverage or even parking. How do you build that infrastructure so that when the tech changes, um, we're ready and it's not so costly to, to do something different? Technology has always been uh, uh, part of it, um, but I, I think that it has the, the challenges uh, that we're facing. Uh, it's really advanced the, the importance uh, from from the associates all the way through the organization uh, and into the products. Um, I, on, on some of the fronts, the I, um, I, I think it has. Uh, we have indexed more on the uh, technology piece as it relates to products, and and I uh, and I think that this that's going to be more of a a trend. I think that previously there was a little bit of a fear uh, associated with it, or we can always do that later. And I I, I believe that now uh, in in this new era, um, it's. It, it's shining itself, but the, it's, its head is popping up, saying, "You know, no, you need to do it now." <laughs> um, for us, technology is—I mean, it's at the center of what we do. You know, part of our purpose is really to enrich people's lives through technology, and then obviously, one way that we deliver that to customers is using an e-commerce platform, um, all of the ways that you make an appointment with us, you know, technology is part of all of that. And so I would say for us, um, what we have found is that we have to accelerate our um, technology transformation. We're an, we're an older company, as you can imagine, we have lots of things and Greg could attest to this. <laughs> I know he knows this, but like, we have lots of things that are sort of like a little chewing gum here and some wire here and kind of stitching together technologies that may or may not have ever wanted to talk to one another. So what I think we have really found is we can't wait. We have to move a lot faster on um, updating and transforming our technology. And then we have to really get good at thinking digital first um, and acting as if we're a digital native company, which, you know, for a, a traditional brick and mortar is not always the first thing you think of. Even though we've done a lot of work um, digitally, it's it's still not always our first inclination. So absolutely, I think technology is, is critical and it's a way for us to truly address um, needs of consumers and employees in a meaningful way.